My name is Dan Patton. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I'm going to be presenting a case of talonavicular non-union. We did a revision with a nitinol plate. This is a patient, a 34-year-old female that had a history of Mueller-Weiss syndrome, avascular necrosis of the navicular bone, who presented with arthritis of the talonavicular joint. Unfortunately, she had a talonavicular attempted fusion that went on to non-union 16 months prior to presenting to me. She reported no significant relief in her pain from her index surgery due to the non-union. She had been compliant with post-operative instructions of non-weight bearing. She had no indications of infection. She denied any nicotine use and had no underlying medical issues. Surgical considerations in this case, a possible inadequate neutralization of the attempted fusion site. Only isolated talonavicular fusion was attempted, which may have left her with a bit more instability than was needed. Questions of infection, post-operative plan, and biologic support in this case. My answers to this on the right, you can see a locking compression dynanite plate was added. A subtalar fusion was added in addition to the talonavicular uh, joint fusion to lock down the acetabulum pedis. Workup for infection, we saw normal labs, so no signs of infection. Uh, she had been compliant with non-weight bearing and maybe needed some biologic support, so we elected for arthrocell adjuvant in this case. For this uh, biologic adjuvant, we used an arthrocell in addition to uh, bone grafting, supplemented with PRP to make sure that she had all the biologic support needed to go on to union. When selecting a plate, I chose the four-hole cross plate with a dynamic dynanite compression modality to add not only neutralization, but also compression across the uh, attempted fusion site. There are multiple options. The four-hole worked best for talonavicular joint. When thinking about fixation strategy, the operative sequence is important. First, you need to take down the area of non-union, uh, clean out any scar, and then add your biologic adjuvants as you can into that fusion site. I use a 2-0 drill to create multiple perforations through the subchondral bone, and then add the arthrocell into those perforations. Next is important to get preliminary compression across a well-reduced fusion site. I use a clamp, a point-to-point -point clamp for that step. And then adding static compression as you would in any fracture or fusion site with a, a static compression type partially threaded screw. So I use a 4.5 millimeter partially threaded lag screw to obtain that compression intraoperatively. We want that compression, that dynamic compression, to continue postoperatively, and so adding the dynanite plate as a final step to continue compressing afterwards allows that compression to continue on in the postoperative period, even after we've left the operating room, making this plate strategy an advantage over many other plate fixation strategies. Here's an example of how that dynanite compression plate works. On the static image on the right, you can see with it distracted, that's how you implant it. And then after that box is removed, the plate then compresses as far as it can until the bone is compressed together. And if there is some reabsorption around the screw holes or if the patient walks on it, that compression continues even after you've left the operating room. In the video, you can see that on loop as the plate is distracted and compressed. Here are some pictures of the implantation of the plate. Technical considerations here are you want to, of course, pick the appropriate position on fluoroscopic images to avoid the nearby joints. Also need to consider the soft tissue surrounding this. In releasing the plate, the uh, set screw comes in from the side, which may require a percutaneous incision to access that, making this a fairly minimally invasive approach. Here you can see that set screw being loosened to allow for compression across the tail and navicular joint, and the box will then be removed. Here's our final fluoroscopic images intraoperatively of the final construct. In this case, we went on to do, prepare the subtalar joint and place two partially threaded 6.7 millimeter screws into the calcaneus through the calcaneal tuber. This adds overall stability to the acetabulum pedis to prevent any further motion through that tail and navicular joint that initially struggled to go on to union. In summary, consider the tail and navicular joint and the subtalar joints to work as a unit. The acetabulum pedis is made up of more than just the tail and navicular joint, but also the subtalar joint. Consider multiple biologic options that Arthrex offers, such as Arthrocell with adjuvant of PRP. 
Dynanet compression plating option is a wonderful tool to have in your armamentarium of fixation options, and it offers a significant advantage in that it allows for dynamic compression even in the post-operative period. After you've completed compression in the operating room, this implant continues to compress across the site of union until the patient goes on to full union. Allow you to set the depth, which is an advantage over staples, in that you can get bicortical fixation with a fixed angle construct into the dynamite plate.